with regard to spirituality, can someone be right and someone be wrong? Kind of like the Tic Tacs. It's hmm. interesting. Could someone be right and somebody be wrong? Hello, Juan. Pierce, how are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I was just looking at your um, street epistemology. Yes. Interesting. You have a YouTube channel. Yes, I do. Oh, what, what do you do exactly? I saw something about atheism and stuff. Ah, yes. I, uh, so what I do is I ask people what they believe and why. And yeah, if you did see anything about atheism, that would be because I am an atheist. I, okay. uh, it's not that I actively believe that there is no God. Uh, I believe okay. that uh, I just lack belief in God. I uh, don't know if there is a God, so therefore I do not uh, awesome. actively hold that belief. Awesome. So you're you're uh, you're an agnostic, but uh, uh, you're uh, willing to see. Uh, you know, you're not closed. You're not closed to the. Because uh, I used to be agnostic myself. Like I was, I wasn't close to the concept of God, but um, I was open to it. Like I didn't know there was, but if I had enough proof or something, then that would probably lead me down the path of uh, there probably is a God, or God as God as you know, God of my understanding. Right, because I think people come off and they come from different angles in life, and uh, the inner standing of God is uh, difficult for the human mind to comprehend what exactly it is, and uh, is there such a thing as a God or one God or many gods and things like that. Right, Cause, so this is this is uh, something that I was into uh, for a few years as well, being uh, uh, an agnostic but open to the possibility of maybe there's a God. Yeah, yeah, I think that describes uh, me fairly well. I think Perfect. if there was uh, evidence, um, yeah, I would totally, I'm totally willing to adjust my confidence, 100%, yeah. That's awesome, Pierce. Well, good to meet you, brother. Yeah, good to meet you, too. <laughs> so I guess, uh, I guess we should uh, start... Um, Start at the beginning. The beginning is always the best place to start. So um, we kind of got into it uh, um, via text there. Um, my first question is always, uh, what do you believe? What do I believe? Um, you know, I was, I, was in the I was in the military for about 25 years. I've been in and out. I had a foot in into uh, the concept of God and one foot out. You know, um, I really never gave much thought to it. You know, at points in my life, during especially during my career, uh, in points of you know when there was danger and stuff like that involved, I was in the Canadian military for 25 years. I did a few operations overseas, and uh, you know sometimes I let I, I I would tend to lean towards a god, um, and then I, I I'd head to church. You know the the, the basic things. You know uh, the, the first church I was ever I was baptized as a Catholic. Um, but I found church quite boring, actually, super boring. Mm. And I didn't, I didn't understand all the rituals and stuff. It really didn't uh, resonate with me. And then the older I got, uh, the more I started to to uh, to uh, lean towards evangel uh, e evangelicalism, no, evangel evan evangelicals, evangelical, evangelicalism, <laughs> evangelical. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Even evangelical the evangelical movement and i'd have questions like i would have all sorts of questions i'm the type of person that really thinks outside the box like i'm not just ready and willing to accept anything they tell me including you know things from the government things from school i was that kid in school that and you know the kid in the family that asked a lot of questions why 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 right right and so i remember once the pastor's wife said well why don't you just stop asking so many questions and just believe and i said well no that that, does, that doesn't make any sense like i need some tangible proof right they're telling me that uh, Thomas you know uh, the uh, the disciple Thomas in the Bible that he mm -hmm. would uh, he asked like he didn't believe you know even though Christ uh, well the guy Yeshua shows up in front of him 
uh, he wanted to touch the wounds, you know, he wanted to see it, like, are you really for real, like, did you really come back? So I, I, one of the things that, that, that really stuck out for me in church, uh, you know, when they say it's church, it's actually a congregation, it's just a place to congregate, uh, was that they would say, if you don't believe that he died for your sins, then you're going to hell. And then this just really didn't make any sense. Like, why would an all-loving, encompassing father send someone who didn't believe to hell, but give Thomas a chance? Like, don't, wouldn't we all have a chance, right? So then I started investigating on on what this hell was. You know, that was something for me. I needed to, to see what is what is hell? Is there is is there really a place for hell? Like if I love my daughter so much but she didn't believe something I told her, would I send her to a place called hell for the rest of eternity? It just didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And I found out that hell was actually uh another word for you know King James and his scribes uh during the sixteen hundreds when they translated this. Uh, took the concept of the grave, the actual translation is not is not uh, hell it's actually shiol shiol means the grave that's the actual translation so it would take you to the grave literally like you you didn't reach that point of enlightenment like heaven is actually not uh, uh something that's outside of you it's actually um and this is through a lot of research right uh it's it's actually uh something that it, it's a point in your life that you reach it's it's actually not necessarily a point but it's the destination that you're at it's really the journey of enlightenment this is heaven so so like god in in the in the way the church teaches is not how i i see it at all in any sense i find mm. that uh the, the concept of one god you know uh, one god like god right uh, mm -hmm. You take G-O-D, you add an O, you have the word good. You take D out of devil, you have the word evil. The original teachings in the Bible, the scriptures have been really uh, twisted and, and uh, to, to suit the, uh, the royal families through history. They were, they were twisted and, you know, it, it's a way of control, the way they would control the masses. I, I hope I'm making sense here. Yeah, I think I'm, um, I think I am, I'm sticking with you here. Right? It, it was a way to control the masses. The original... Uh, the original books, like people say that this is the Baal, B-A-A-L, right? There's a, there's a whole movement called, they, they like to call themselves the truth movement, people in search of truth, right? So there's this truth movement that's uh, this awakening, right? And people have an inkling that there's something just not quite right with every single, I think, man-made institution, which most are, of course, man-made. <laughs> it doesn't take a genius to do a, a podcast, but... but uh, <laughs> But yeah, it, it, these man-made concepts of, you know, like uh, uh, education. Education is a way to indoctrinate kids to uh, or children to be part of this matrix, right? Then mm -hmm. you have the health system. The health system is really, I used to be part of the health system for 21 years. I was a combat medic, studied medicine for about a year and a half. And one of the things that really uh, didn't, I didn't see how the doctors would not incorporate nutrition, right? and, and especially organic nutrition, right? So people... Uh, a lot of sick people, so pharmacia, you know, and, you know, people adjusting medicines not to heal them, but to keep them around the middle, right? Not not healthy, not sick, but around the middle. Keep, you know, and you keep giving them pills. So uh, pharmacia. Then you have, um, uh, you know, the justice system, quite corrupt. Like every single system is quite twisted and corrupt uh, to a certain point, right? And, and there's okay. a lot of deception involved. What I like to stick to, my friend, is uh, Gnosticism. That, that's what I am. I'm a Gnostic. I'm okay. a person that has a, an inner knowing, something that grows within me. There's mm -hmm. been a huge spiritual shift inside me, right? There's been a huge spiritual shift inside me. How, what does that mean exactly, a spiritual shift, something growing within you? Can you yeah. explain that further? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, in November of 2016, I felt like I was going to get on a roller coaster. Literally, like I love roller coasters. It felt really exciting. Something was, was changing inside me. And I would tell this to my wife. I said, well, you know, I feel like there's something inside me that's just, I don't know. It's, it, it's inexplicable, I would say to my wife. It's like I'm going to get on a roller coaster. And, uh, and or like, the, you know, when your parents would announce to you the next day you're going to go to the amusement park. I couldn't sleep that night, right? So, so like was butterflies of, in your stomach, kind of like that yes, kind of deal? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like a sort of excitement, you know? something's happening and uh i remember i was um looking for a house 
And the specific house was a house with uh, dark hardwood floors. I'm from Quebec, so from Canada, Quebec, Canada. We don't we don't like rugs in Quebec, Canada. The usual thing is hardwood floors, right, in mm -hmm. ceramics. And this is what I wanted: hardwood floors. I had I have dark furniture, and I wanted was looking for a house with that that specific thing. I wanted an open an open basement, sort of loft like, you know, so I can have a open concept basement finished. This is what I wanted. I wanted a, a semi-raised bungalow. I'm just giving you some details here, so sure. to, okay. to explain. And um, and I was kind of, you know, I, I kind of get attached to my thing. So there was a an old uh, 2004 uh, dryer, you know, clothes dryer that I have that I had, right? And uh, I was kind of like I didn't want to leave that behind, but knowing that I was going to get into a new home, there was probably a washer dryer there. And this these are I, I like to think in advance, you know. Yeah. So yeah. so on Christmas uh, on Christmas Eve, I'm looking through the uh, you know the buy and sell Kijiji in Canada. I don't know where you're from. Where are you from? I'm from uh, the United States, kind of the the north okay. northern region. Okay. All right. So there's this like buy and sell uh, website. So I'm looking at Kijiji, and I see a house. It just it just calls my attention. So the next day, I tell my wife, you know what? Uh, I wrote somebody last night about this house. They wrote me back at 1:30 a.m. Uh, it was a night I couldn't sleep. She was sleeping. And I said, well, since it's Christmas Day, let's just stay home. And she said, no, 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 let's go see this house. So we went to see this house. And Pierce, as I walk, as I, I drive, as I go into the driveway, I'm looking at this house and I'm telling myself, I've seen this house before. Like, I've seen this house before. Like, obviously, I saw it in the picture. But I've been here before, right? And so when the lady opens up the doorway, there's hardwood floors, like dark hardwood floors, just like I envisioned it, the same thing. And mm -hmm. so as we go downstairs and she opens up the basement door, it's a finished open concept basement, just like I had in my, in my thoughts. Same thing. It's like I envisioned this and it manifests in front of me. Okay. So then I'm thinking, well, the next thing is probably the dryer. This is what I'm thinking in my, in my mind, right? And as she opens the door to the washer dryer, there it is. Same dryer I had in the other home, same, 2004 Gibson model, I'm looking at it and I'm in total awe, I'm in complete and utter awe, and I'm looking at my wife and I said, do you see what I'm seeing, right, she, she knew that I was kind of sad, not saddened, but you know, I, was, I didn't want to leave that dryer behind, so I left it happily, no worries, keep it, right, in the other home, mm -hmm. and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'm glad to take this home, so a couple of months later, I pick up my, my phone, and I see the number 222. It's 222 in the afternoon. So that's pretty interesting, right? Triple, triple twos. I didn't give it much thought, but it was pretty interesting, right? Sure. The next day, twice a day. Yeah. The next day, yeah. I open up my phone again, and it's 222 again. And I go, what? It's kind of odd, right? Wow, 222. This is, this is something different. So that evening, my dog comes and licks my face. I had a chihuahua. I have another one now. But this chihuahua comes and never did this in all the 11 years I had him. Never, ever, ever woke us up at night. Would sleep with us in the same bed, but never, ever would wake me up. Never. I would take him out at night, 10, 11 in the evening. He'd do his last uh, you know, pee or whatever outside, come back mm -hmm. in. And uh, this time, he's asking me for the door. So I'm thinking, okay, so are you sure you want to go pee, right? <laughs> it's late. So he's all excited. So I get off my bed, I, I go, I open up the patio door, this is in the new house, I let him out, and as I turn around, I look at the oven clock, and it's 2.22 a.m. All my hair is raised, all of them, because I knew it had to happen. Had it been five minutes before, it wouldn't have been the same. Five minutes later, a minute later, it wouldn't have been the same. It's like something, it was divinely inspired, or there's this energy, this frequency, something is happening, or vibration, mm -hmm. something is happening that's aligning me with this time. And then it went on and on and on of 222. I would see it on license plates. I have pictures of it, Pierce. I could, I could send you this. Like you could see okay. I'm serious. No, I, I, I trust I, you. I, right? I drop. Well, don't. Don't trust me. You don't know me. Okay. <laughs> okay? Don't, you don't trust. Don't know me. You don't. Like, this is, uh, uh, we get to learn, you know, get to know well, each other. This is why I said I, audio first, and then we can do video later. Right? Sure, sure. And so I'm, I'm driving my daughter to university. Uh, this is in September, so this is in you know this is all happening during in uh, in 2017. So I'm talking to people about this. I'm saying, do you see numbers? And they'd say, what do you mean? Do you see numbers like 11, 11, 222, 333? Do you see this? And they say, I have no idea what you're talking about. So I thought, wow, this is like few and far between. I post some pictures of this on my on my Facebook. 
just to see mm -hmm. if I got any attention. And some people would come and throw hearts, you know, put hearts on it. And then write me in private and say, you're seeing numbers too. I thought, wow, this is this is something. Like, there's other people seeing this, uh, these numbers, right? And uh, mm. uh, then I came across this, these articles about 11, 11, 11 awakening, this awakening, this awakening uh, code or angel numbers, right? Yeah, so yeah, I, I have heard of that. Right, so what's this whole thing about angel numbers and 11, 11, you know, 11, 11, make a wish. And there's a movie they made out with 11, 11, right? So I thought that was pretty interesting, right? So anyways, I parked my car. And this is when it's really started to materialize. This was when it became like, this is out of this world, right? Um, I go and park my car in a in a in middle of Ottawa, in a city. I'm dropping my daughter off at university for the first time in September of 2017. I'm all sad and I park the car. I go up, I, we go up the elevator, and as we hit the street, I turn around to see the address to make sure I've got the, you know, I don't forget the address, and it's 2:22, and I absolutely flipped. I said, do you see that? And I'm showing my wife, do you see that 222? She saw, like, she wouldn't see the constant, this, these numbers, but but she saw it. And I said, this has become very different now. So at one point, Pierce, I'm driving in my car and I'm having all these synchronicities in my life. I would think about something and it would, it would come into my life. I would think about a certain object that would come into my life, right? Um, okay. Or I'd come across, I'd think about a name and they'd be calling me. I'd think about uh, a concept in my mind about this this world being sort of holographic or matrix like almost like in the oh. movies right okay and so, so I, I see so something right? supernatural is going on something something absolutely because okay. natural would be more this tangible you know you knock on the door and it's it's uh it's something concrete it's tangible but i, I, think um, I have a question for you there Juan. go ahead go ahead so i guess According to, uh, uh, no, correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm saying something, I'm trying to repeat back what I'm hearing. And if I'm saying something that you're not saying, just say, hey, Pierce, nope, you got it wrong. But what I think you're saying is that you're seeing these numbers, specifically uh, 222, over and over again. Yeah. And you've seen it on several, several occasions. Uh, yeah. You saw it that one day, and then it, when your dog was uh, going out to urinate unexpectedly in a kind of yep. a weird circumstance, you saw 222 there. You saw yep. it on some license plates. Yep. Uh, it was like the address to your daughter's college or something like that when you were dropping her off. Absolutely. And the, the best explanation that you have, or, or according to you, is that something supernatural is going on, some matrix type thing. Absolutely. Um, is, yes. is that all correct? That sound about yes. right? Okay. Yep. And yep. if that's the best excla explanation, what is the second best explanation? Well, it's just it's just not one thing. I think I think this this question this this uh, this concept is multifaceted. Hmm. It's it's a multifaceted thing. Okay, and I'll explain. Okay. It's taken me down quite a path. This is why I created the Divine Spark. Interesting that in seven weeks we have almost eight thousand members. That says a lot. You know, it, it says a lot. Hold on, I wanna I wanna show you something here. I'm sending you a picture. Okay. I'm sending you a picture. All right, could you see your messenger on Facebook? I can. Okay, I'm going to send you something. This really caught my attention. This is a picture of my dash, okay, in Canada. I just want you to take a look at that. Okay. All right, this is, this is, right? I see it. All right. So, so these are the kind of synchronicities I would see, right? So, uh, Okay, so this is what's been happening. Like, I mean, this is, I'm explaining what's happening, but like it's really taken me down quite a, quite the journey. Uh, I've figured out that we are energy, vibration, and frequency. Before we are anything energy, else. vibration, and frequency. Yes, we are, yes. Okay, are what does that mean? I, I don't know. We, we are energetic beings. We function on energy. Like all your muscles, everything, your brain, everything is energy. Okay, right. I'm with you on that. Yeah, and all objects vibrate. As at an, an, an atomic level, you are vibrating like water. Water mm -hmm. vibrates, right? Water vibrates. Right. So if you look at it under in a uh, uh, micron microscope, I guess you would see water vibrating. Yep. Well, you'd I'm also see you'd also see uh, everything that is living, and even even the whole material world is vibrating when they go to a, a, a subatomic or quantum level, right? Quantum level, everything vibrates. It all vibrates. Mm -hmm.
right? So there's yeah, anything a, that has temperature would have some sort of movement unless you're at atomic zero, but then but we've, nobody's yes. ever experienced that. Nobody's ever observed that. Yeah, so, so right. everything's vibrating. Okay. And, then, and then we are frequential. Like your, 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 your very being is, is frequential. This is why the, in the matrix they attack us with frequencies. So we have a certain frequency to us. Right, they measured the heart at seven point eight three. Okay, this is like uh, the vibration of the atoms. Are we talking about or? There's there's a frequency that your your body emits. Frequency. Yeah. How is this measured? What is what is this frequency? It's seven point eight three at the heart. Seven point eight three, and this is like a tool that's used. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, well, do you this, know the name of like the tool? The, no, this is me just reading. Oh, yeah, this is me okay, reading. How, how do we how do we know that this is true and accurate? Hold on a second. I'd have to find. I'll have to find a few articles that I've read and send it your way so you can read it. Okay. All right. Okay. So I've determined that we are energy, vibration, and frequency. Great question, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> awesome question. So energy, vibration, and frequency. Um, hmm. I'm just I'm just trying to get, gather my thoughts here. That's fine. Take your time. Yeah, energy, vibration, and frequency. Um, so this world that this 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 world that we that we uh, live on is also energy, vibration, and frequency. Everything vibrates. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a vibration to numbers. Numbers are. Or there's a there's a frequency like the number doesn't represent the number per se the number represents something and in this quantum world this quantum universe that we stem from how do I determine this because they've actually have you ever seen the double slit experiment I have heard of it I'm not intimately familiar with it but I know a little bit about it yeah, yeah there's this double slit experiment I've seen videos on this and I've read articles on this. So from what I gathered, this is what happens. The scientists, they put a, a, a photon, like a gun or something, something that emits mm -hmm. photons in a room. They took a, a, a divider with two slits in it and they, they, they had a wall at the end. What they would do is they would fire this, this, uh, this apparatus and that, then they would go and measure where the particles would land on the wall. It's called a double slit experiment. So when they were not observing this, the particles would land anywhere on the wall, which was interesting. But then when they put a camera in the room and observe this experiment, the, the particles would land in an expected pattern. There was a pattern to them. So okay. what they determined after having done this is that our observation has something, some, has an influence on the outcome. Of these hmm. of these photons, right? Is so it possible when, that the camera itself, its physical presence, had an effect on the the protons themselves? Could, physically? could be, could be, okay. could be. But I mean, I I would guess that somebody would probably end up in the room and observing them. I, I'm not sure. You'd have to go hmm. and read it and, and watch this yourself. Okay. But it took me down the path of our observation. Um, and it's pretty interesting. It's almost like a first-person shooter game. When you're looking at the physical world, right? What it, what's behind you? Does it really is it really materialized, or does it take your observation for those particles to come together? These are questions that I had in my mind, right? Like, would that be possible that we're almost like in a first-person shooter game? And uh -huh. when you're when your when your computer's not actually you know you don't actually move the joystick to the right, is that present, right? So it's it, it took me down this road of maybe what we're living in is like a hologram, right? Like this holographic, uh, you know, el illusory, uh, illusory, I guess it, that's the word, uh, world, right? Where we're actually okay. thinking that what we're seeing is, is physical, and it is. I mean, to our five senses, you know, there, there is a physicality to it, but maybe there's something more to this. Maybe there's something more to this world, right? Okay, um, so at this point in your, your journey, you're... You have this thought, this like hypothesis, I guess you could say, is like, are we living like in this matrix world, right? Yes. And um, as of right now, or in your story, 
um, at this point in your story, I should say. Uh, what what is your confidence level at that we we are living in? If you don't mind me saying it, I'm just gonna no, say no, go in the matrix. Sure. Yeah, is that an okay way to word it? Absolutely, yes. Okay. So, what where is your confidence level at this point in your story? One hundred percent. Hmm, that's interesting. One hundred percent. Why is it at one hundred percent? Ah. Hmm. Why is it 100%? It's just a feeling that I have inside after having read a lot, after having watched a lot, lot of documentaries, after having done well, my investigation. And there's just an inner knowing that this is what it is. Uh, okay. Okay. There's just an inner knowing. A it's feeling. not really, it's a feeling. Yeah. It's, feeling. it's, 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 it's a feeling. And I think feelings are very, uh, I think feelings are sort of like this gut instinct. Right? There's just something that resonates with me. And it's just okay. not one thing. It's the whole thing. And Do you, do you think that like, someone... I'm sorry. Ahead. Okay, thanks. Go ahead. Um, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you think that a feeling that someone has is always going to be a reliable way to determine truth? No. No. But no. in your case, it is? Yes. Why is that? Because I've done a lot of investigating on this. Ah. Uh. So you don't really have to rely on your feelings. It's more about the investigating? Well, I, after having investigated, my feeling is this is what it is. Oh, okay. So it's more like um, like you're more of uh, your confidence about the evidence that you've uh, came across? More like that? Yes, yes okay. absolutely. Mm -hmm. You mind if we talk about the evidence then? No, go ahead. Okay, uh, I guess what, what, what is the, the evidence? What, is, what makes you believe that we live in the matrix? That we live in the matrix. <laughs> and I'm using it kind of loosely. <laughs> I don't mean literally like the movie. I've never, had, never, I've never, had, I've never had all these questions. <laughs> what, is, what is the confidence set that we live in the matrix? Quant, the quantum, the quantum world that we, that we stem from. Quantum physics. Quantum physics. Quantum physics. Yes, everything okay. that stems from the quantum. See, we are, we are, we are, we are, we stem from a quantum state. We are quantum beings. Everything is okay. energy. We are the materialization of the quantum world. If you it would go to a subatomic level, you would see that atoms are are not are are vibrating, and they're not. There's a space between them. There's a space between them. We are not just okay. physical. Right? There's a space between mm -hmm. atoms. And this is science. See, I like to base right. my things on science. See, I'm not just a religious type. I'm going to believe this type of thing. I've, I've always sure. been a person that's asked a lot of questions. But because we stem <laughs> from a quantum world, and what's the quantum world? It's everything around us. And then mm. some. The quantum, in the quantum universe, anything is possible. Every single possibility is possible. I remember in, in physics class, uh, in high school, uh, secondary five, that's grade 11 or 12 for you. Uh, there was this guy named Mr. Yonkers, a scientist, uh, and he would, he would teach, he would be teaching at, in high school. He was, like, I, I found him completely out in left field, but there was something specific that he said. He said in the quantum, in the quantum universe, anything is possible. And if, if, if the quantum, and he said, including all the air in this room being on one side of the room and all the other, uh, side of the classroom suffocated with no air. This is how everything is possible in the quantum world. He said in the quantum world, there's no time. There's no time or space. There's only time and space here as we know it. And it's an illusory state. Mm. He said in the quantum world, it's all, anything is possible. So there's no time or space. So okay. this really caught my attention. So this yeah. is why I know we're living in a matrix. See, right. there's, no, there's, no, there's no left or right on, on this for me. This is, this is no right, there's no wrong side to this. This is, this is me being 100% certain that we stem from a quantum world and that we live in a matrix. Let me, let me repeat back kind of what I'm hearing just to make sure we're on the same page because I'm not sure if I'm understanding completely. So, Sure. We have our reality that we live in, things that we can see, touch, smell, detect, maybe using tools. Uh, yes, sure. We can both look outside, and if we're in the same location, if I was in Canada right now, we could look out and see the same tree, right? 
So we're kind of sharing Earth and probably the whole universe, right? Um, so that would be like our physical reality. We're on that kind of the same page there? Sure. Okay, awesome. And then uh, what you're describing as the, the quantum world, that, yes. is that that's <clears throat> outside of what we can see, taste, smell, detect? That's something outside of all that? Sure, yes. Okay, awesome. But, but, but see, see, see t taste, all this, that stems from the quantum. See, your, your very makeup, you coming together as a dense being, human being, is, is quantum energy actually becoming something dense. Okay. Sort of like a frequency. See, that's like saying there's a frequency in the air, and when it hits your, your radio, then there's, there's, there's audible music or a voice I, coming out of that box. Right? I guess, how do, so, how do, we, how do we know that? that comes from the quantum world. How do we know a quantum world exists? This is science, quantum science. physics. You'd have okay. to go investigate this for yourself. I guess I guess the best way is uh, like we have a conversation and then you actually go and uh, and read it. I think I, I think I could. I, I imagine that I might come to a different conclusion than you come to though. Could could be. Could be, but it's it's like it's like uh, could be, but but uh, th that would have to be you. You'd have to go and check it out. Sure, right? sure. You'd have to go and read it. Also, I'd have to add that what you see is a the, the visible spectrum. Okay, is only a portion of the electromagnetic uh, spectrum that is visible to the human eye. Mm -hmm. So there's 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 a lot of light that we do not, there's wavelengths and lights that we do not see that do exist around us. Sure, sure. Uh, microwaves, ultraviolet, yep. Sure, sure. There's a visible mm -hmm. light spectrum that we can see. And then there's other spectrum of light that we do not see. See, I'll give you an example. A snake can see thermal, uh, sort of like a thermal, I remember when we were um, in the, I was in the military. First time they ever came out with thermal, uh, a thermal, you say like a like thermal a, camera? Yeah, yeah. It was more like that. It was like a binoculars, right? So we could right. uh, look around, and we didn't see buddy, right? We didn't see whatever people, and then we would look through these this apparatus, and then we saw people walking at nighttime, which was very mm -hmm. interesting. There's snakes that have this ability to do that, right? So there's there's okay. animals like cats do not see like a human eye sees, right? And this is science, right? Yep. Yeah, so there's certain things that we cannot see that do exist around us. And I guess I'm so there's different uh, living creatures that can see different spectrums of, of light, right? The snake, sure, yes. the cat. Sure. Uh, d does that have a connection with uh, your beliefs about um, this other, the quantum world? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't really, uh, it's, I guess, I guess, I guess what I'm getting at is there's just things that we do not see, like frequencies we can't see, right? It comes through mm -hmm. your radio, then you could hear it, right? So yeah. I, I guess I would have to, I equate that to, to this, this quantum state becoming physical, physical, just because we do not see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Ah, that is true. Right. Just because we can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, totally just because we don't see you. it, taste it, feel it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But but the question I have mm -hmm. is, so just because we can't see it doesn't mean it exists. However, doesn't just because we can't, exist. right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just because we can't see it should we believe it does exist? No, should is actually a, an individual thing. Uh, See, there's some true. people that do not want to investigate anything. There's some people that are so in this world of this world, meaning that they don't want it. They don't have any concept of spirituality. They don't want to see outside the box. For them, life is just waking up in the morning. And, and I'm generalizing here, but there's a lot of people like that around us. That they're just interested in uh, going to work, making a buck, coming home, buying objects, staying home, watch TV, uh, maybe have a trip once or twice a year if they can, you know, gain material wealth. You know, I, I'm born, I eat, uh, I do the three S's like in the military, shit, shower, shave, 
go to bed at <laughs> night and that's my life, right? And that's it. Okay. And there's nothing more to this. And then there's other persons, you know, I guess, and, and, and I'm, I'm generalizing here. There's other people like me who ask a lot of questions about this reality. Like there's more to this reality that meets the eye. And when I'm down that path, it takes me to different, uh, to a different, I would guess, I would have to say like awareness. There's a higher conscious awareness of, of our existence, right? Not just this physical ex existence, uh, but that there's something else beyond the physical. Just because I don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. However, I'd have to also say, beliefs do change, and I evolve as I go along. There were things that I was, I believed in the past that have, that I've not necessarily wrong, because there's no, not, there's no right or wrong in this, on this journey, right? It is a journey right. of enlightenment, right? There's a journey of enlightenment. So certain things that I, uh, certain thoughts that I had in the past, sort of like, I'll give you an example. I'm 51 today, right? I don't believe the same at 51 as I did when I was 20. Mm -hmm. or when I was 30, or when I was 40. There's an evolution to this, which is beautiful in itself, right? So when can I someone, have covers, Go ahead. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but can someone, like, at age 30 uh, have, a, have a belief, and then someone at age 50 have a belief, and when they're 50, can the belief that they hold at age 50 be more incorrect or uh, farther away from the truth? than their belief they held at age 30? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Uh, well, first I have to say it's, it's, it's on an individual basis. I can't mm -hmm. speak for anybody else but myself. Right? This, is, this is something mm -hmm. I cannot speak for anybody else but myself. Could that be a possibility? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't negate that. Sure. Awesome. I, I got another quick quick thing that I'd like to present is kind of like a thought experiment. Sure. So I've got, uh, I've actually, actually got it right here. I'll let you listen to it. Okay. It's a little can of uh, Tic Tacs. Can? Okay. Container? Container of Tic Tacs. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's say that I say that I believe that there is an even amount of Tic Tacs in my container. Sure. And um, you say that you believe there is an odd number of Tic Tacs in my container right here. Sure. Uh, would you agree that uh, one of us is correct and one of us is incorrect? Sure, yes. Okay. And probably the what would be the best way to determine who is correct and who is incorrect? Well, opening up the container and counting them. Awesome. And I, I guess what I heard earlier... And I'm not trying to, to, to trap you by asking this, and um, just so you're aware. So I, I heard that when you're on this journey, there's no right or wrong answers, I think you were implying that you meant. Sure. Um, with regards to spirituality, can someone be right and someone be wrong? Kind of like the Tic Tacs? Hmm. It's interesting. Could someone be right and somebody be wrong? I'd have to say yes. Okay. But just like you took the Tic Tacs out of the box to, to count them, you'd have yes. to actually go down and this would be a personal journey, right? This is, this is personal. Is there any right or wrong in spirituality? I would have to say not necessarily. It could be right, but not necessarily. It's a learning experience. There's mm. really no right or wrong. It's a, it's a learning experience. It's a journey, right? I think that every, it's 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 um, when I've been wrong, it's taught me a lesson. Where here are you really learning a lesson by by being right or wrong about the tic tacs in the box? Is there really a lesson? Um. I guess maybe the lesson would be you probably assumed. Or, uh, you know, we just made a guess, but there's no real life lesson in it. In spirituality, mm -hmm. there's a lesson. There's something that you're learning, especially about yourself. Mihit, mami, estoy en el teléfono. Hold on a second. Yeah, no problem. Hold on a second. Mihita, por favor, estoy en el teléfono. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry about that. 
Yeah, no problem at all. It's family. I'm in Ecuador. Yeah. So. That's okay. Family's important. My mom in law, she's idiot. She's very, uh, <laughs> very, very loud. She can't hear. So. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, my friend. Yeah, see, I, I, I don't know if that makes sense to you. It, it does to me, right? There's a life lesson in spirituality, there's a spiritual lesson, I guess. Um, yeah, right. I and, I just, and I just want to say something to you. you know, spirit, spirit, being spiritual, spiritual is a breath. A spirit is a breath, right? This is means it means to breathe, right? Spirituality is the art of breathing. Art of breathing. Yes, spirituality hmm. means the art of breathing, and to be spiritual is to breathe. This is why, uh, sort of like in yogic practices, they do a lot of breathing. This is where they're becoming spiritual. See, a lot of people don't 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 understand this concept because they haven't they haven't really done their their investigation or research. I like to research stuff and put it into practice. So I do a lot of deep breathing exercise, and I take myself into a meditative state, it almost into a nothingness, where really I could be there for an hour or two, and I'm really uh, I'm really deep. It's it's very it's a it's a I, I'm bringing my, my brain waves. I don't remember what to what wave, nor does it really interest me. But the brain waves actually change, right? There's there's a there's a sure. brain wave change, and I take myself into a deep meditative state where I don't even feel the bed under me. Yeah, I, I've tried meditating before, and I think I've um, I think I've been there before, where it's a uh, a very relaxing experience, right? I think I've had it where my brain waves have uh, slowed down, right? Maybe that, sure, I don't yes. know if that's the correct term, but I don't know. I guess I wouldn't consider myself uh, spiritual. I wouldn't consider there anything uh, supernatural going on. Mm -hmm. um, theta waves. That's it. Yeah. That so is, during meditation, theta work. waves. Yeah, theta waves. This is why they have uh, binaural theta waves uh, meditation uh, available on YouTube. So. I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. I just, I just breathe. <laughs> okay, sure. All right. I, I think we've covered a, a lot here. It was uh, really great. Um, is there, is there anything else that you wanted to, to talk about or do you want to call it a wrap? I'm fine with this. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Ask why, away. why, why did you join the divine spark? Well, I like to join a lot of different groups. I like to, to join not only religious groups, but uh, plenty of, of other groups. And I like to see what people believe and why they believe it and see what their, their methodology is. I see how okay. they have determined truth. And then I, I really do enjoy talking to people just like you, Juan, about... Uh, okay about this kind of stuff. I find it very, very interesting. It was an interesting conversation with you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. It was very, very interesting from my side as well. <laughs> we could chat anytime. If you ever like to do a video call, that'd be awesome. Uh, okay. You're more than welcome to ask questions in the group, you know, an interview. If you want to interview other people, go right ahead, my friend. I, uh, I actually didn't, um, I didn't approve your post because I thought, uh, why not just answer this gentleman? Uh, if you're in a Gnostic group, I'm, I actually consider myself a teacher, so I do teach people in there. And uh, you know, but if there's other people you want to interview, my friend, just go right ahead. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate it so much, Juan. I really you're do. You're very welcome. All right, you're very welcome. Enjoy your Sunday. Thank you. You too. T take care, brother. Bye bye. Bye.